So just back from walking the kids to uh, to school, it feels a bit like I uh, stuck the news on it. It feels a bit like day 30 of the uh, the zombie apocalypse out there. Um, so the Fed have launched, I guess, what you'd call the big bazooka. Um, so they have cut uh, the Fed rate to zero, which has often been kicked around or muted as a as a possible uh, last resort of fiscal uh, stimulus. Um, they've also started QE, I guess it's five or six now, in terms of uh, buying back uh, um, financial instruments, mainly in the bond uh, market, with the first $40 billion going in today, and a $750 billion program uh, in total. Um, so, uh, so there is a huge amount of fiscal stimulus coming into the market. What's interesting is the market reaction. So the Australian stock market dropped 6% on the news. The, obviously, the, the US dollar has declined. That's understandable with all the free money kicking around. Um, but also, the uh, the futures for uh, for the Dow are down a 1,000 points as well. So um, the market is basically seeing this as panic or something that's a lot more serious than perhaps it had already priced in. Um, I'm not sure. I think it has already kind of priced it in. I think, um, uh, I think it's an interesting... Uh, an interesting reaction because I guess if you look at you know the three types of business that are going to be affected so obviously there's there's a whole bunch of businesses that won't be affected at all there's a bunch of stuff that just has to keep happening all the time uh, you know irregardless um, you're then gonna have a bunch of businesses that are uh, permanently affected but in a in an isolated way so you know we'll have the next maybe four to eight weeks while uh, this is sorted out where there'll be a, a gap in their income. So, you know, obviously four weeks will be an 8% drop and eight weeks will be a 16% drop over the, uh, over the course of a year in very specific sectors. You know, so for example, um, if a plane travels today and the seat is empty, um, then you can't ever sell that seat again, you know, so that's, uh, that's lost demand. So that's money that will never, uh, you know, never come back, but that money still exists. It can still be spent on other things and, and used for other things. Um, you then have what you would classify as the pent-up demand. So pent-up demand is stuff that still has to happen, but maybe is going to happen a little bit later um, than anticipated. So there's a whole bunch of things in the economy that will create the, uh, you know, the pent-up demand where somebody, they still need to spend the money, it still needs to happen. So, you know, perhaps a construction site gets closed down uh, for eight weeks because they're worried about the virus. Well, the building still needs to get built. So all that happens is that there's some costs to the developer for the delay, um, overruns a bit on time and, and cost, but ultimately the money still gets spent and it still gets done. So, you know, you could argue that basically once this is resolved, um, that there is going to be a, uh, you know, a, a release of all of this pent up demand. Plus you've had the Fed and other central banks pouring loads of gasoline on the embers of the fire. So it could be a massive explosion in terms of, uh, in terms of recovery um, and actually I think when you look at the kind of the underlying system the underlying system was pretty robust this time around so in 2008 and 2009 we had banks failing we had you know real uh, you know financial institutions under a lot of pressure um, this time you don't really see that at all so in fact somebody commented this is more like you know from a stock market and business shock it's more like a 9-11 event than it is a 2008 uh, event in that um, there isn't that same underlying systemic risk. There's just a shock that's been kind of added to it. And then, you know, in terms of how this gets resolved, I think there's a number of ways. So obviously um, in the US, they're trying to accelerate human trials with vaccines and, uh, uh, and the such like. In China, they're just going ahead with it. So uh, in China, they already have human trials underway um, for uh, vaccines. Um, so that's one possible route. The other possible route is that uh, we just, uh, the weather starts to warm up. It seems to behave very much like flu or the common cold in that the uh, virus itself thrives in uh, the cold environment and is much more communicable in the cold environment. So as the weather starts to warm up in, uh, in Europe uh, and the US, as we come out of winter and into spring and summer, um, it could just naturally disappear. Um, and then there is just the measures that are being taken at the moment. So, I mean, if you just, uh, I think the maths in the US show that about 50% of the population get it and it peaks and starts to tail off in four to eight weeks time. Um, so basically if it was just left to run its course, um, it, it would probably take about eight weeks by the time it's, it's you know, the people that have been affected have either recovered or 
unfortunately not recovered. Um, what was really interesting is statistically they think in the US um, uh, there could be around 3 million deaths, but they actually don't think that would necessarily affect the death rate much for the year. Um, so, you know, effectively you, you would read into that and say, well, these are people they were expecting to die anyway, or that would, may, maybe would have thought that died anyway. So it's a bit of a uh, it's interesting to say that there would be 3 million deaths that they would link to this respiratory syndrome, but that the death rate overall for the year, which is about in about 3 million people a year die in the US from old age and uh, disease and, and things like that. So um, uh, basically, I think what they're saying is that this just uh, th this wouldn't be a significant factor on the overall death rate for the US, which is which is a really interesting uh, uh, thing to try and get your uh, get your head around. But anyway, so there's there's, there's a few different routes that will lead this to uh, come to a conclusion, or or at least get to a point where um, the exponential growth in the spread has stopped. Because I think that's you know that's where we saw everything start to get a lot better in China is when the new cases stopped growing exponentially. Then kind of uh, everything uh, you know started to work a lot better. Factories started to reopen, and everything started to. Uh, um, come a little bit back to uh, back to normal so look I think that's a similar thing we have to see unfurl here um, so you know there's going to be this four to eight week period um, that we just have to uh, we have to get through um, but I guess the thing to remember is that the central banks and uh, and everyone else is pouring a lot of uh, liquidity and a lot of capital into this so it could be um, you know it could be very much back to business as usual um, by the uh, by the summer um, of course we have to wait and see nobody has a uh, you know a, a view into the future um, uh, you know uh, nobody's got the, the crystal ball so I think um, yeah keep watching um, but you know my my main concern I mean obviously there's the investor standpoint I think there are going to be some fantastic opportunities um, out there as an investor I would use options to potentially um, uh, buy stocks if they drop significantly more from where they are today because I think there's some fantastic option pricing due to the volatility and la lack of liquidity at those uh, lower ends so I think you can you know you can do very very well there um, and I think uh, you know just looking at the small business community because you know small businesses are predominantly owned by baby boomers um, baby boomers are going to be more affected by this they're the ones that might have to self-isolate um, they also probably don't have the appetite to go through another financial crisis and you have to remember that what's happening in the markets now will be a precursor to something happening uh, in the general business community and at some point in the future so um, but there's a significant lag so you can find that uh, the cash flow issues bite in three months or six months or 12 months or even 18 months uh, later so um, and uh, you know most of those baby boomers have been through a few of these so they understand how it all works and uh, yeah maybe they don't have the appetite for making redundancies taking the tough choices and doing the things that need to be done in these kind of uh, crisis so they may well be looking uh, to this as, a, as an exit moment a chance to uh, yeah, get themselves out of uh, out of their business so I think um, yeah, it can be a good time uh, to be looking at consolidating your industry or acquiring competitors uh, or generally uh, growing by acquisition. So yeah, keep your eyes peeled, keep, um, keep looking out there um, and try not to join the general panic of the herd. Um, but uh, yeah, good luck and stay safe.